what if I wanted to get a distance of 2 on this logarithmic scale? Now to do that I need to go to my calculator and enter the log of 2. Now because I have my my units you know I have 20 units lying between 10 to the 0 and 10 to the 1 I have to figure out what the log of 2 is and what I get from the log of 2 is 10 to the something 10 to the what equals 2 I gotta multiply that by 2 in order to get the correct scaling so I'm just going to enter that and I got 0 0.6020 and that's because the log of 2 is 0 0.3010 well, okay, 6020, I gotta go, if I treat each of these as one decimal point, then I go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 602 is very close to here. So this is the number 2. Okay, the number 2 in the log scale. Well, if I if this distance, if this distance means that I'm doubling my 1 to make a 2, this same distance, which I can just cut and paste, just do copy and paste, this same distance can take that 2 and use it to make a 4. Okay, So I'm taking the same distance and I'm using that to make a 4. And so the 4 is about here probably just ahead of the um, grid line so 10 so that's 2 that's 4 and this is a logarithmic scale because a logarithmic scale does have to do with doubling if I paste this again now I get another times 2 and I can make an 8 okay and the 8 goes once again ahead of the grid mark okay and so that's the number 8. So that's 2, that's 4, that's 8. As opposed to, you know, uh, an arithmetic scale. An arithmetic scale has to do with adding 2, right? Adding a number. But instead, as you can see, we're definitely not adding here. We're multiplying. But this is giving you an idea what the log scale looks like. Well, let's find out where 3 is located because 3 also is useful. So 3 take the log of that, multiply by 2. It's roughly just under half, so when I multiply by 2 it's 0 0.954, so 0.954, 1, hold on, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 954 is roughly halfway between these two grid marks, so I'm calling this 3. Okay. Now, of course, this is now a whole other multiplication. This is now, um, in fact, I will use the use this pen, and I, I'm saying that going from here all the way to here is multiplying by 3. Now, okay, so that means that if I now take this, sorry, Okay, so if I cut and paste this, copy, paste, I now bring that over, I have another 3, and I join these two arrows head to tail, the 9 is about there. So that's 9, not quite halfway, it, it's sort of, you can notice that the 9 is further from the 8 than it is to the 10, which is intended for the log scale. The numbers in this region are the numbers 5, 6, and 7, which we can now find those logs. And once again, the reason we use logs to make a log scale is because there's no other reliable way to say 10 to what power is, are, is 6, for example. And then when we multiply by 2, we get 1.556. So, um, so 1... 1 point one two three four five 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 six is roughly just over that halfway point so that's oh that's not five that's six I skipped five for some reason so this is six let's try five and go backwards a little bit so log of five 
1.397, when I multiply that by 2, that's what I get. So 1, 1 1.1, 1 1.2, 1 1.3, 3 is almost here, almost at the point 0.4, so that's 5. The 7, going back, going to 7, and hitting enter, we get 1.69 when I multiply that by 2. Um, so once again, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 6, 9 is almost here right about there and so you can see that the numbers as you go in this direction get closer and closer together roughly because that's the log scale so what we have just uh, what we have just done is we've achieved uh, drawing the log scale on an arithmetic graph now we're going to explore some examples of log scales that we see around us First of all, uh, what a log scale looks like. Uh, let's compare this to an arithmetic scale. You can notice that on an arithmetic scale, the distance between 1 and 2 is the same as the distance between, say, 9 and 10, or, say, 13 and 14, or so on. Whereas on a logarithmic scale, the distance between 1 and 2 is definitely not the same as the distance between 9 and 10. Uh, 1 and 2 is much longer. Uh, and this is actually just makes up for the fact that um, that logs don't go uh, the same way as the spacings between logs aren't really the same as the spacings between numbers. For example, five is halfway between five and ten, or sorry, between zero and ten. However, it is not halfway on the log scale. And when you take the log of five, it's something like well, close to point seven or so. So, and you can see here, 5 is definitely more than halfway between itself and between, I'm sorry, 1 and 10. Well, over here we have something called the aperture value. Uh, this has to do with uh, cameras. And so, you know, you look at something like the f-stop, which is used for focusing, and, um, and uh, the f-stop is also known as the aperture. So the aperture setting here is on a logarithmic scale, and notice this is a logarithmic scale. Once again, the spacings between, say, 2 and 4 uh, are not, don't appear to be the same as the one between 11 and, say, 13 but they seem to be the same as the spacing between roughly 10 and 20 because 11 and 22 is roughly the same space as what's between 2 and 4. So the doublings are the same and that's important too that if we look at a logarithmic scale it's the doublings that have the same spacings uh, not not the adjacent numbers. So okay uh, the aperture setting on a camera on this axis is shown to be a logarithmic scale and there's this quantity here called the aperture value um, which is actually uh, on an arithmetic scale you can see the spacings are the same and when you have something which grows exponentially uh, a number which grows exponentially plotted against something which is arithmetic you often get a straight line uh, which is what happens here this is a as you can see as straight a line as you can get, but uh, the scale is logarithmic. Then there's this other thing you may notice on some older stereo systems, um, this sort of analog VU meter. The uh, VU meter can be taken as a measurement of a decibel output, but usually it's, um, usually it's the power level of, of a stereo. So um, that's actually uh, a VU meter. Notice that the VU meter has a logarithmic scale. The space between 0 and 1 is definitely not the same as the space between 5 and 6 or between 10 and 11. As you notice, this is 10 going all the way to 20. Okay, here's our next example of a log scale. Now units of length is not something I would really associate with a log scale. Uh, units of length are what they are and it's an arithmetic scale as much as anything 
but when uh, somebody chose uh, this um, scale here to compare the different lengths, he went, um, this person here uh, who wrote the scale started with 10 to the 15 and notice the spacings are the same between um, every fifth exponent. So the the distances between the exponents are the same which means actually this is an arithmetic this is not an arithmetic uh, scale this is actually a logarithmic scale and this is because if you took the logs of all of these numbers the log of 10 to the minus 15 would be minus 15 and this would be minus 10 and this would be minus 5 this would be 0 and going all the way to say 15 this is positive 15 positive 20 and the log of 10 to the 25 would be positive 25 and this is indeed a logarithmic scale not a arithmetic scale uh, over here so you can see it in common use in in places all around you where you wouldn't normally expect it and um, this, uh, if we now map this over to wavelengths of, say, waves and meters, uh, you can see uh, where that goes as well. This is actually uh, a logarithmic scale also. Um, if we take a frequency of sound, uh, also a logarithmic scale. The frequency of sound is a logarithmic scale because it e increases, as you can see, exponentially. Um, next. So, for example, um, a earthquake of 3 on the Richter scale is, relative to others, is 10 times stronger than an earthquake that is 2 on the Richter scale. So, if we think of it that way, then an earthquake 6 on the Richter scale, will we go how many hops from 3? 1, 2, 3. It's 1,000 times, or 10 to the power of 3 times, more powerful than an earthquake of magnitude 3. Okay, so, um, and if we go all the way up here, that 8.9 jobby, well, it's 1, 2, 3, or not quite a thousand times more powerful because this is not the number 9, this is 8.9. So really, uh, a, an earthquake of 8.9 is 10 to the 2.9 times greater. than uh, an earthquake of 6 on the Richter scale, 10 to the 2.9, which is, well, close enough to a thousand times. But on that scale, if we take an earthquake of, say, even 1 of 9, if we just take 9 on the Richter scale um, and compare it with, say, an earthquake of 2 on the Richter scale, well, uh, we have to think in terms of how many times greater is 9 than 2 uh, on the Richter scale. So we're going to take 10 to the 9 minus 2, which is really 10 to the 7. So this earthquake is 10 million times more intense than an earthquake of 2 on the Richter scale. So you can uh, do a lot of things with this, um, for sure. Um, also, musical scales are not what you would uh, normally recognize as being a logarithmic scale or... Um, but the reason it is, is because of its attachment to frequency. So this column that's highlighted in yellow is the frequency of a sound in hertz. So the lowest note on the piano, um, A0, is 27 and a half hertz. Okay, 27 and a half hertz. Well, the next A that we see here, right over here, is actually 55 hertz which is double the first a that we saw so and let's see if that's a pattern well okay here's the next a that's on the scale and it's 110 hertz which is double 55 which is double 27 and a half so this is a, a you know very good example of um, at least a growth that is exponential but as you know, if you know anything about logs, um, if you take the logs of an exponential growth, if you take the logs of the numbers of an exponential growth, what you end up with is a logarithmic growth, which is a straight line. So 
uh, this these frequencies go up exponentially so we start with 27 and a half but by the time we get to the highest key on the piano it we're already at 4186 um, which is not the top of the hu human hearing range but that's quite a high note on the piano now also uh, we also have uh, something called a pH scale and the pH scale is a measure of acidity it's the measure of the concentration of H plus ions actually to be precise it's the negative log of the concentration and because uh, if we took basically if we took the log of the concentration uh, direct directly we'd only get negative numbers and uh, and this is true whenever we try to measure acidity in living systems. All living systems have very low acidities, so usually below one tenth of a mole per liter. So if you want to go below that, uh, it's better to put a minus sign in front of the log expression, and so that the concentration, if we just think of the concentration of uh, H plus. Well, if we take the negative log of that concentration of H+, plus, we get something called the pH. Okay, And the pH scale is a number between 0 and 14. Uh, a pH of 0 is very acidic. Say a pH of 0 is really a concentration of 1 mole per liter of acid. Now, in living systems, this is a terribly huge amount of acid. This is horribly huge for most living things. So that's why um, this is considered the bottom of the scale or the you know really the top of the scale. This is as acid as we would like for the pH scale. Well okay what about pH of 1? Well pH of 1, pH of 2, somewhere between there is stomach acid in humans so between one tenth of a mole per liter and lower. This is considered um, very strong acid uh, in fact, so strong that it kills bacteria from your food and uh, just pr pretty much sterilizes your food and preparing it for digestion. Um, also, what about vinegar, cola, beer? Well, here's a little bottle of Coca-Cola there. And um, that cola has a pH of 3. You wouldn't think so. It has so much sugar in it that you hardly taste the acid, but it is highly acidic.